الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين نبينا ورسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ثم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفثه إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا صالحين يا عفو يا كريم So I'd like to welcome you to the first of these two lessons we have dedicated to which we will be in which we will be inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be explaining the hadith of sayyiduna Jundub bin Abdullah bin Sufyan al-Bajali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu which is full of fawaid full of benefits containing two statements of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and likewise two advices from sayyiduna Jundub bin Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu inshallah ta'ala uh, we might not even reach the hadith today. We will, inshallah, be discussing today the importance of hadith, makanatul hadith, azamatul hadith, the greatness of hadith, the importance of hadith, and along with that, the station held by Sayyidul Fuqaha, Imam Al Muhaddithin, Imam Abu Abdullah, Muhammad bin Ismail Al Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and likewise the position of his authorship al jamii al sahih known as sahih al bukhari because these are some details that need to be mentioned as an introduction before studying a hadith from sahih bukhari you have to know what is hadith you need to know who is imam bukhari you need to know what is the rank and what is the position of al imam al bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi so even though we might not even enter into the hadith today we might start that next week allahu a'lam how uh, how much time we have but just for the barakah and the blessings of the hadith we will be studying, we will inshallah recite the hadith uh, in the beginning inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala with Qari Hamad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ولشيخنا ولوالديه والمشايخه والمسلمين أجمعين قال المحدثين قال المحدث قال قال المصنف الإمام المحدثين أبو عبد الله محمد بن إسماعيل البخاري رحمه الله تعالى في كتابه صحيح البخاري باب من شاق شاق الله عليه حدثنا إسحاق الواسطي حدثنا خالد عن الجريري عن طريف أبي تميمة قال شهدت صفوان وجندبا وأصحابه وهو يوصيهم فقالوا هل سمعت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شيئا قال سمعته يقول من سمع سمع الله من به يوم القيامة قال ومن يشاء يشقق يشقق الله عليه يوم القيامة فقالوا أوصينا فقال إن أول ما ينتن من الإنسان بطنه فمن استطاع ألا يأكل إلا طيبا فليفعل ومن استطاع ألا يحال بينه وبين الجنة بملء كفه من دم أهراقه فليفعل قلت لأبي عبد الله من يقول سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جندب قال نعم جندب <coughs> hadith the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama what is the rank of this hadith the superiority and the station the makana of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order for us to understand this we need to know first that as a human being we are comprising of two components we are comprising of two parts jism the body that we have and our ruh and our soul and this body that we have been granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah the Jalal created from this earth 
ومن آياته أن خلقكم من تراب. It's as in Surah Al-Rum. It is from the signs of Allah Subhanahu that He created you from this earth. منها خلقناكم وفيها نعيدكم ومنها نخرجكم تارة أخرى. From this earth we created you. And how was that? As in the Sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi, Sayyidina Abu Musa Al-Ash'ari رضي الله تعالى عنه He said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إن الله خلق آدم من قبضة قبضها من جميع الأرض فجاء بنو آدم على قدر الأرض الله سبحانه وتعالى He created Sayyidina Adam عليه الصلاة والسلام From a handful of earth he took from this earth From a handful of soil he took from this earth So therefore the people, they come in accordance to the earth Some of them are in the different colors of the soil Likewise human beings come in different colors And the types of soil, the rough and the soft human beings They come in the same regard also We have been created from this earth and therefore our bodies, the nutrients and the food for our bodies has also been placed in the same place it was created from. And if our bodies do not obtain those nutrients, then our bodies become sick, our bodies become ill. And the second component is our ruh, our soul, which Allah subhanahu sent from the heavens. As Allah, uh, uh, the Hayat of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Lengthy hadith. ثُمَّ يُرْسَلُ إِلَيْهِ الْمَلَكِ فَيَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ Allah subhanahu after 120 days of conception. Then Allah dhul jalal, he sends an angel to the fetus, to the baby, and that angel blows into it the soul. Blows into it its ruh. So our soul, the soul is, its origin is from the heavens. And the food for this soul has also been sent from the same place of origin of that ruh, which is in the heavens. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ Allah subhanahu he has sent for you the kitab and the hikmah. For the as food for our souls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed two affairs, kitab and hikmah. The Qur'an and likewise, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whenever you find the Quran along with Kitab is Hikmah, that Hikmah is the Sunnah and the Ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Bittifaq al Mufassirin by the consensus of all of the scholars of Tafsir of exegesis of the Quran, Hikmah refers to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is also nourishment for our ruh. This is also nourishment for our soul. And if our soul does not receive the, its due portion of uh, kitab and sunnah, then a person's soul will also become sick and will also become ill. And if this is not there, then we see what we see all around us. More than 28% last time I checked. Allahu alam what the number is of the population of this country they are, have fallen into severe depression into a whirlwind of depression why because something is missing from their lives something is missing from their soul their soul is not receiving its nourishment as ha, as has been sent from by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Quran and of the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherever you find in Quran that Allah mentions the and the duty of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ His duty and his responsibility was وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ To teach the people not only the Qur'an but teach them the hikmah as well, the wisdom. Teach them the sun, his sunnah alayhi salatu was salam. This was his duty at sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because no understanding of Islam is complete unless it has been taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions very explicitly, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَى لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ We have verily sent down upon you, O my Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this dhikr, this remembrance. And when the word dhikr comes, dhikr does not only mean Qur'an. 
as many people they say as in Surah Al-Hijr Allah mentions inna nahnu nazzalna nazzalna al-dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidhun we have sent down this dhikr this remembrance and we shall guard it from corruption what is this dhikr a lot of people say this dhikr is Quran it is not only Quran for example in Surah Talaq Surah Talaq how does Allah mention this word dhikr qad anzal Allah ilaykum dhikra Allah has sent down upon you a remembrance what is the next wording Rasulan yatlu alaykum And if you know Arabic grammar Rasul here is badal of dhikr Rasul here is a substitute for dhikr We have sent down upon you a dhikr What is that dhikr? Rasulan yatlu alaykum A messenger who recites upon you His ahadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is included in dhikr Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr we have sent down this dhikr. Dhikr entails both Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So back in Surah Al-Nahl, where Allah mentions, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرِ We have sent down upon you this dhikr, O my Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For what purpose? لِتُبَيِّنَ للناس. In order that you may explain to the people. That is the role of your hadith. That you may explain this hadith is the greatest tafsir of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And this Qur'an and the Sunnah are both mentioned as a great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ and make mention of the blessing of Allah subhanahu the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu that he has sent down upon you from the and Allah mentions from the kitab and from his hikmah from the Quran and from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam both are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala both have been sent down both are munazzal min Allah both have been sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam its rank and its station is so high is so lofty such an extent, one of our mashayikh, Ustad al-Kul, Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi rahmatullahi alayhi, who for two years, he also, he taught in Medina University. In the beginning stages, he traveled, Sheikh ibn Ubaz, he sent people to find teachers, and from Pakistan, they took two. Sheikh Allama Abdul Ghaffar Hassan Rahmani, rahimahullah ta'ala, the father of our teacher, Sheikh Dr. Suhaib Hassan. And the second was Ustad Al-Kul Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He has a very, uh, a very pertinent statement of how important hadith is. He says that this Quran, <clears throat> showing the high importance of hadith, Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the beginning of Sahih Bukhari, we are taught the beginning of revelation. All of all the Muslims they know, all the Muslim children they know. That Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam in the cave of Hira and he recited the first five ayat of Surah Al-Alaq to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. And he went running to his wife Sayyida Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. All of the Muslims they know this. How did we know the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informing us. By the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opening his mouth alayhi salatu wa sallam and telling us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this revelation. So you can say chronologically, hadith has to come first and then the Quran comes to us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has to inform us. He has to tell us alayhi salatu wa salam that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in revelation and then the ummah will know what revelation has been sent to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the same tongue from which his hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they came. Another indication how great and how lofty this hadith is is in Surah Al-Zukhruf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَقِيلِهِ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ هَا أُولَاءِ قَوْمٌ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ 
And this composition in Arabic is interesting. Waqilihi ya Rab. Waqilihi. Normally you would say, Waqawlahu. Waqawlahu ya Rab. Inna haulai qawmun la yu'minun. But here Allah mentions Waqilihi. It's all with kasra. Because wow here is wow al qasam. Like how Allah mentions Wattini, Wazaytuni, Wal Asri, Wal Fajri. In the same way Allah says Waqilihi. And I take an oath. Allah is taking a qasam by his statement. Whose statement? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I take an oath by the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Waqilihi ya Rabb. Inna haulai qawmun la yu'minun. Showing how lofty and how high the station of hadith is. How without hadith, without the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then not a single Muslim can establish their Islam. Not a single believer can establish and can act upon their Islam without the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where Allah mentioned the Quran, wa aqimu salah wa zakah establish the prayer and give in zakah does allah mention all of the details of salah and all of the ahkam of zakah wa atimmu al hajj wal umrah lillah perform hajj and umrah allah does not mention the tafsilat and the details of hajj and umrah they come from whom muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as allah subhana commands us in Surah Al-Hashr وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he gives you of teaching and of guidance then take hold of that and whatever he warns you away from then upon you is to abstain from that whatever he gives you from his teachings from his hadith Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَخُذُوهُ then take it Grab hold of it, grapple onto it, and do not abandon it. Such is the station of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the station of his hadith. And if a person abandons the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he mentions, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Let those be warned. Those whom they oppose his commandment sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Lest a trial will befall them Or any humiliating punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu is warning If a person uh, makes mukhalafa If a person conflicts And a person opposes the commandments of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put the people into a fitna into a trial, or oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his adab, will send his punishment upon such a people. Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna rahmatullahi alayhi has a very, very beautiful tafsir in the ayah of Surah Al Hadid. Where in Surah Al Hadid, Allah dhul jalali wal ikram, he mentions, Laqad arsalna rusulana bil bayinat. We have sent our messengers with clear evidences, with bayinat. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا uh, And we sent down مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ We sent down with them two things. A kitab, a book, a scripture, and a mizan, and a scale, a mizan. With each messenger we sent this. We sent them a revelation and we sent with them a mizan. We sent with them a scale. Imam Sufyan uh, bin Uyayna rahmatullahi alayhi he mentions فَإِنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ هُوَ الْمِيزَانُ الْأَكْبَرِ For certainly the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the greatest scale. He is the greatest mizan. وَعَلَيْهِ تُعْرَضُ الْأَشْيَاءِ Upon him Upon his sunnah, upon his ahadith, everything is to be presented. Everything is to be weighed upon his sunnah alayhi salatu was salam. فَمَا وَافَقَهَا فَهُوَ الْحَقِّ وَمَا خَالَفَهَا فَهُوَ الْبَاطِلِ So whoever confirms with that mizan, 
whatever confirms with that scale of his sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam, then that is the truth. And whatever conflicts with it, whatever opposes it, فَهُوَ batil, Then that is falsehood. If that which opposes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what opposes his teaching, what opposes his, his guidance, then whatever opposes it, then that is falsehood and it can never be the truth because the truth is only one. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ What is there oh, after the truth? What is there after the truth? Except for misguidance. Except for that which will lead a person astray. The truth is only one. Noor is only one. Allah always mentions Noor in the singular and Dhulumat in the plural. Noor is only one. Truth is only one, but the Dhulumat are many. The darknesses are many. Misguidances are many. And the truth is only one. That is what is in Kitab and Sunnah. What is in the Quran of Allah Subhanahu and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in today's lesson and tomorrow's, uh, next week's lesson, then inshallah from this Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will take one uh, qatra, one drop from that Bahrun Nubuwa. One drop from the sea of prophethood in which there is guidance for us, in which there is nasiha for us, which we will take from, as we know, the Sahih of Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. So likewise, we need to understand and we need to, need to know who is the author of this compilation, who is the author of this book, the Sahih of Al-Imam al-Bukhari, who is this character, Al-Imam al-Bukhari? So if you look at who he is from his name, then we see from his name, he is Arab or he is Ajam. He is Ajami. Abu Abdullah, Muhammad bin Ismail, bin Ibrahim, bin Al-Mughira, bin Bardizbah, Al-Bukhari, Al-Ju'fi, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala. From his name, from his great-great-grandfather, Bardizbah, we can see he is not from an Arab background, rather he is from a Persian background. And this is no, nothing to be amazed at, that the Aima of the Muhaddithun, they were from Faris, they were from Persia, they were from the lands of Iran, and those areas, Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim was from where? Uh, Imam Muslim was from Nisapur. Again in Iran, Imam Tirmidhi was from Tirmidh, Imam Nasai was from Nasa, Imam uh, Abu Dawud was from Sijistan, Imam Ibn Maja was from Qizween, Imam Bayhaqi was from Bayhaq. All these muhaddithun, they were from the lands of the Ajam and not from the lands of the Arab. And this has already been foretold by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Tafsir of Surah Al-Jumu'ah. In Tafsir of Surah Al-Jumu'ah in Sahih Bukhari. Where the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyyina rasoolan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yuallimuhum al-kitab wal-hikmah wa in kanu min qablu la fi dalalim mubin Allah mentions about the sahaba, they are ummiyyin, they are unlettered people and Allah sent toward them a messenger from among themselves and his duties, he recites upon them his ayat, he purifies them, he teaches them the kitab and the hikmah and then Allah mentions, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been sent to another nation, to some other people, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ Other people who are from among them. Other people who have a connection to the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ Who they have not yet caught up to the Sahaba. لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi records in his sahidah Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu an He asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man hum ya Rasulallah wa akharina min hum lamma yalhaqu bihim This group of believers who have not yet caught up to the sahaba Who are they? Man hum? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his hand on Sayyidina Salman al- Farisi. He put his hand on Sayyidina Salman, the Persian, and he said, لو كان ال... There are different rewards. لو كان العلم بالثرية لو كان الإيمان بالثرية Even if knowledge, even if Iman is at the height of the star of Thuraya, لنا له رجل من هؤلاء A man from amongst these people will go and will obtain that. And بالتفاق العلماء this person referred to by the Prophet ﷺ is Imam 
Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi that if iman if ilm if knowledge is at the heights of the star of Thuraya one person from among the people of Persia will go and will obtain that and that is Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi and some riwayat comes law kana al-ilm bi Thuraya lana lahu rijalun min haula even if the ilm knowledge and iman is at the height of Thuraya people from amongst the people of Salman Farsi will go and obtain that and that is the Jama'ah of Muhaddithun. All of these Muhaddithun, they are always intended by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Imam Bukhari, his asl is, he is Ajami, he is Farisi, he is from the people of Persia. Muhammad bin Ismail bin Ibrahim bin Al-Mughira. Mughira from his great grandparents is the one who became Muslim, Mughira. And he became Muslim upon the hands of the governor of Bukhara, Yaman bin Akhnas al-Ju'fi. Yaman bin Akhnas al-Ju'fi. He was from the tribe of Ju'f, which is a famous tribe of Yemen. And because he became Muslim with Yaman bin Akhnas al-Ju'fi, the governor of Bukhara, <coughs> then also Mughira became known as al-Ju'fi. His ascription was also to the tribe of Ju'f, as is known as Wala'ul Islam. When a person became Muslim, then the people felt that they need to be ascribed to a qabila, to a tribe also. So whoever they became Muslim with, then they are also ascribed to that same tribe. So Mughira, even though he was Persian, he became Ju'fi. He became from the tribe of Ju'f because he became Muslim with somebody from the tribe of Al-Ju'f. So he was known as Mughira Al-Ju'fiyu Mawlahum. Mughira, from the tribe of Ju'f, who he is there, he is their Mawla. He is there, he became Muslim with somebody from this tribe of Ju'f. Muhammad bin Ismail bin Ibrahim. Then his son Ibrahim. And we do not find anything about Ibrahim in the books of biographies of men. There's nothing we find about Ibrahim. His son Ismail, the father of Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. Ismail bin Ibrahim. He, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi himself records in his Tariq al-Kabir about his father. Imam ibn Hibban records in Kitab al-Thiqat that he was from the students of Imam Malik. And he was from the students of Imam Abdullah bin, uh, he was from the students of Imam Malik and also from Hamad bin Zayd. He was from the students of these muhaddithin. And he was written about him, Wasafaha ibn al-Mubarak. And Imam Isma, uh, the father of Imam Bukhari, Ismail bin Ibrahim, he traveled and he met with Imam Abdullah bin Al-Mubarak rahmatullahi alayhi. And he passed away when Imam Bukhari was a young boy. When Imam Bukhari was a young boy, his father passed away. So Imam Bukhari was brought up as a yatim, as an orphan. And how, why is that so strange? The, and he, Imam Bukhari, uh, Imam Bukhari, served the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the one who spoke this hadith, he was also an orphan. He was also a yatim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Bukhari was also an orphan. And the greatest explainer of Sahih Bukhari, Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, also was a yatim. He was also an orphan. How Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose those who were orphans for the protection of his deen, for the propagation of his deen, of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was born as an orphan. His father died when he was a young age. And also is mentioned in the books of history that Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi Alaihi, when he was young, then he lost his eyesight. He lost his eyesight when he was a young boy. It also would have strengthened his memory would have strengthened his memory as he is blind he needs to know where he needs to remember where the living room is where the kitchen is where this is where whose voice is this who's who is speaking now all this when he was a young boy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing him up and nurturing him and training him to be who he was to become al-imam muhammad bin ismail al-bukhari so when he was a young boy he lost his eyesight and his mother such a righteous, such a pious woman, she saw Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in her dream. 
as related in the books of history. And if you think why Allah subhanahu wa chose to show her Sayyidina Ibrahim in her dream, because Imam Bukhari's grandfather's name was Ibrahim, Muhammad bin Ismail bin Ibrahim. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, the father of which nation? The Arab nation, from whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent. She so saw Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam in a dream. And he said to her, Ya hadihi, oh you woman, Ya hadihi, qad radda Allahu ala ibniki basarahu. Allah subhanahu has returned to your son his eyesight. Bi kathrati du'aiki. Because of your abundant du'a. Because of your piety and because of your righteousness, because of your so much making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the eyesight of your son to be returned, Allah subhanahu he has returned back to your son his eyesight. And when she woke up and she went to her son Muhammad bin Ismail, she was amazed and she saw that his eyesight had been returned back to him. And so she straight away sent him to what? Not to just mess around like normal kids and just to waste his childhood. She sent him to the halaqat of Tahfiz al Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this child of his eyesight back again. First thing to put him is into the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then she used to send him to the halaqat of hadith. To the great aimma of the time to go and sit with them, to go and learn with them, go and listen to the hadith from them. And we see the eagerness of Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi and his, his cleverness and his ingen ingenious right from a young age, right from when he was a boy and how astute he was, how clever he was. We find that even from a young age. He says about himself, I was narrated by Abu Hatim al Warraq. Abu Hatim al Warraq was the scribe of Imam Bukhari. He mentions that Imam Bukhari, he said, Ulhim tu hifd al hadithi wa ana fil kuttab. I was given this ilham. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu he placed it in my heart to memorize hadith when I was fil kuttab. When I was with the kids in the maktab learning Alif Ba Ta Tha Jim Ha, Allah subhanahu he placed in my heart a love of memorizing hadith. At that young age, Kam Ata Alayka Idhaq, Abu Hatim Warraq, he says, how old was you when, when you began this, when you had this love of hadith, memorizing hadith put in your heart? He said, Ashra Sineen. 10 years old. I was 10 years old and I found this love in my heart for memorizing hadith. I was only 10 years old. And we find the example of when he was a young boy. No, in his early teens, he was in the majalis of Al Imam al Dakhili, rahmatullahi alayhi. And he was in the majlis of Imam Dakhili when he was making imla, where he was dictating hadith. And in dictation, the um, uh, halaqat of imla, then all of the students around the sheikh, all of them are writing like crazy. The imam, the sheikh, he is dictating his hadith, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And the tulab, the talamid, are writing and writing, as if they do not have time to even think what the imam he is saying. They are busy writing and writing and writing. And in that majlis of Imam Dakhili, Imam Dakhili, he mentions a hadith. He says, حدثنا سفيان عن أبي حدثنا سفيان عن أبي الزبير عن إبراهيم and right as he was dictating all the students are writing and Imam Bukhari رحمة الله عليه he raised his, his hand and as a young boy he said يا أستاذ ارجع إلى أصلك أو تيشا أو إمام داخلي go back to your Notes go back because they would all they wouldn't have papers, they would all be dictating from min him from their memory. He said, Go back to the asl, go back to your notes, go back to your, your, your book. You have made a mistake. Imam Dakhli, he was amazed. He said, I'm the teacher, you are a young boy. I'm telling you, Hadathana Sufyan, and Abi Zubair, and Ibrahim. He said, No, asl. go back to your the origin of your notes. And so he went. And he came back smiling and he said, Kaifa huwa ya ghulam? Oh young boy, how is it? And he said, Sufyan, an, an Zubair, wa huwa ibn Adi an, Ib an Ibrahim. He said, It is Sufyan, you said, an Abiz Zubair. 
He is not Abu Zubair. Inna Abu Zubairi lam yarwi an Ibrahim. Abu Zubair, at that moment, he recognized that Imam, he teacher made a mistake. Abu, Abu Ibrahim, Abu Zubair, he does not narrate from Ibrahim. So in one moment, as a young lad, Imam Bukhari, he deciphered and he brought to his memory all of the students of Ibrahim and Abu Zubair is not among them. But among them is Zubair ibn Adi, who he confused him with. And Imam Bukhari so, recognized and alerted his teacher. And he said, it is Sufyan and is Zubair ibn Adi and Ibrahim. Showing us from a young, bo uh, from a young age, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, he has a sharp mind, a sharp memory that even all of his peers, they did not clock. They did not realize the teacher made this minor error. Instead of Abu Zubair, it is Zubair ibn Adi. But Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, at a young age, he saw this, showing us that he has a bright future ahead of him. Likewise, he mentions when he was 16 years old, he says that Hafiztu Kutub ibn al Mubarak. At a 16 year old boy, I memorized the books of Imam Abdullah ibn al Mubarak. Wa Waqi'ah. And I memorized the books of Imam Waqi'ah ibn al Jarrah. Then he mentions Wa Araftu Kalama Haula. And I recognized the speech of these people. Ahlul Rai. The people of Rai. At 16 years old, I recognized and I knew all their hiyal and all of their plots and how they escaped from acting on hadith and how they reject hadith. At 16 years old, he memorized the books which were available to him of Imam Abdullah bin Al Mubarak, of Al Imam Waqi' ibn Al Jarrah. And likewise, we find another example of his intelligence at a young age where he was in the majlis of Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf Al Firyabi. Al-Firyabi, not Al-Firabri. Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf Al-Firabri is a student of Imam Bukhari. Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf Al-Firyabi is a teacher of Imam Bukhari. He says that I was with the, in the majlis of Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf Al-Firyabi. And Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf, he said, Haddathana Sufyan, an Abi Urwata, an Abi Al-Khattabi, an Abi Hamzata. And he said, all of the students, all, all of their faces was, they were amazed. They said, Nobody knew who is Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf al Firyabi talking about. Hadathana Sufyan an Abi Urwa, an Abi Abil Khattab, an Abi Hamza. None of them knew who are these people. Because Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna, he used to yukanni al Mashhurin. He used to label the famous narrators with their kunya in order to confuse the people. And Imam Bukhari said, All of Falam Yarif, Ahadun Fil Majlis, Manfauka Sufyan. Nobody in that Majlis knew who was above Sufyan. Abu Urwa, Abu, Abu Al Khattab, Abu Hamza. Then Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Ali, without any notes in front of him. He was there as a student in the Majlis. He said to them, and he said, Abu Urwa tu, Abu Urwa, Hua Ma'amar ibn Rashid. Abu Urwa is Ma'amar ibn Rashid. Abu Al Khattabi, and Abu al-Khattab is Qatada bin Di'ama al-Sadusi. And Abu Hamza is Anas ibn Malikin. Radiyallahu anhu. So now it makes sense. Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna narrates from Ma'amar ibn Rashid. From Qatada bin Di'ama, from Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu. All of the students, they know these asanit. But when Imam Muhammad bin Yusuf al-Firyabi narrated that Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna said, Hadathana Abu Urwa, An Abi al-Khattabi, An Abi Hamzata, None of them knew who, who he was talking about. But Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, his dhaka and his intelligence was in that moment, he deciphered whose kunya belonged to which rawi, which kunya belonged to which uh, narrator. And the examples are too many to discuss how intelligent Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, he was. So we'll conclude with just some statements as to what the scholar, his, his, stu, his teachers, and his students said about him. And then we'll conclude this lesson today and we'll continue next week with the station of Sahih Bukhari and then we'll go into the hadith of Sayyidina Jundub bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. From his teachers, <coughs> from his mashayikh, then Imam Nu'aym bin Hamad rahmatullahi alayhi, he said that Muhammad bin Ismail faqihu hadihi al-umma. 
Imam Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari, he is the faqih of this ummah, which is a slap on the face of those people who say that the muhaddithin are not fuqaha, who say that the muhaddithin have no fiqh to them. The fiqh are they in Kufa and the Ahlul Rai. No. Imam Muhammad, Imam Nu'aym bin Hamad, he said Muhammad bin Ismail, faqihu, he didn't say faqihu Baghdad, he didn't say faqihu al-Hijaz, he said faqihu hadihi al-ummah. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, he is the faqih of this whole ummah. Imam uh, Muhammad bin Bashar al-Bundar rahmatullahi alayhi, Muhammad bin Bashar, who is the teacher of all of the six Imams, Imam Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi, Nasai, Abu Maja, all six of them, this is their teacher, Imam Muhammad bin Bashar. He said by Imam Bukhari, huwa afqahu khalqillahi fi zamanina. Imam Bukhari, he is the most faqih of the creation of Allah, all of the creation of Allah in our time. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi is afqa. He has the most fiqh from all of this ummah. Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim, Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim rahwaya. What can make you know who is Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim? He is the one who gave the idea to Imam Bukhari to author his Sahih Bukhari. Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim, once Imam Bukhari was sat with him, uh, with the other students, and Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim said, Law jama'atum kitaban jami'an min sahihi sunnati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If only, you, if only one of you combines and compiles a book, only including the authentic narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Imam Bukhari says, فَوَقَعَ ذَلِكَ فِي قَلْبِي That settled in my heart. What Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim said in that one majlis, that settled in my heart. And Allah subhana placed it in my heart that I will be the one who performs, who, who carries out this action of compiling the first book which is only comprising of authentic. Because in the time of Imam Bukhari, there were many books that were written, Musnad Imam Ahmad, Musnad Imam Shafi'i, Muatta Imam Malik, Musannaf Abdul Razak, Musannaf uh, Ibn Abi Shayba. So many books were written, but none of them were only comprising of Sahih Riwayat. None of them were only comprising of, none of them had iltizam of only authentic narrations. They were mixed. Some were maktu, some were mursal, some were da'if, some were sahih, some were... They were all of different gradings. But Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, because of this, just one, in one majlis, imagine, if Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim never said that, if he never said that same in that one sitting, perhaps we would never even have Sahih Bukhari in front of us today. But just one statement, one statement Imam Ishaq bin Ibrahim said, Imam Bukhari decided to compile his Sahih Bukhari. He said that law kana, if Imam Bukhari was law kana fi zaman al Hasan, if Imam Bukhari was in the time of Imam Hasan Basri rahmatullahi alayhi, lahtaja ilayhi, then Imam Hasan Basri would have been in need of Imam Bukhari. Li fiqhihi, because of his understanding of hadith. That even if Imam Bukhari was there in the time of Imam Hassan Basri, Sayyidu Tabi'een, Khayru Tabi'een, the best of the Tabi'een, Imam Hassan Basri, if Imam Bukhari was there at that time, Imam Ishaq ibn Ibrahim said, he would have been in need of the genius of Al Imam al Bukhari, Rahmatullahi alayhi. Likewise, Imam ibn Khuzayma, from the students of Imam Bukhari, who has, who has compiled his book, Sahih ibn. Khuzayma. He also compiled a book, Sahih ibn Khuzayma. He said that ma ra'aytu tahta samai a'lama bil hadithi min Muhammad ibn Ismail. I never saw anybody under the heavens more knowledgeable in hadith than Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. Likewise, Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Muslim, the compiler of Sahih Muslim. He said, uh, that ashhadu al laysa fi dunya mithluka imam bukhari i testify nobody on this earth is similar to you oh imam bukhari ashhadu al laysa fi dunya mithluk wa la yubghiduka illa hasidun and oh imam bukhari nobody will envy you nobody will hate you except somebody who is envious of you Thus, how can anybody envy, how can anybody hate you oh imam muhammad bin ismail al bukhari Likewise, Imam Tirmidhi, rahmatullahi alayhi, from the students of Imam Bukhari, he said, Lam ara, I never saw, a'lama, somebody who is more knowledgeable bil ilal than the science of ilal al-hadith, the hidden defects. And we've already spoken about one example of how Imam Bukhari was an expert in ilal, where he was with Imam, huh? who was he with? 
when Imam Bukhari rahmatullah had deciphered in a single moment that he had made a mistake he was not Abu Zubair was Zubair ibn Adi this is what you call illa a hidden defect in the hadith Imam Tirmidhi says لم أرى أعلم بالعلل ولا بالأسانيد من محمد بن إسماعيل البخاري I never saw anybody more knowledgeable in hidden defects of hadith and nobody more knowledgeable in the science of hadith of أسانيد than Imam Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi I will conclude with an incident which took place with Imam Bukhari and his teacher where once <coughs> Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi he said that ما استصغرت نفسي عند أحد إلا عند علي بن المديني I never saw myself to be small I never trivialized myself in front of anybody except in front of Imam Ali bin Abdullah al-Madini when I was with Imam Ali al-Madini then I saw myself as a baby I saw myself as a child in front of Imam Ali bin Madini قال لمن أخبره Imam Ali bin Madini said to somebody who told him of the statement that you know your student Imam Bukhari he is saying I never, saw, I never saw myself small except in front of you. And then Imam Ali bin Madini, he said, Da' qawlahu. Abandon the statement of Imam Bukhari. Leave him. Leave the statement of his. Da' qawlahu. Why? Ma ra'a mithla nafsihi. Because he, Imam Bukhari, has never seen anybody similar to himself. There is nobody on this earth similar like Al Imam Al Bukhari. He has never seen anybody who is the same as him. And we could go on and on and on speaking about the fadail and the virtues and how great, how high the status of Al Imam Al Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, he is. We'll, uh, we'll uh, suffice by saying that Imam Bukhari was a master in number one, the science of hadith. And in number two, the science of fiqh. He was a master in the science of fiqh and his sahih is a, a testimony to that. How his sahih, how Imam Bukhari derives the fiqh from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside his sahih. And he was also a master in the science of aqeedah. In the science of aqeedah. He says that, كَتَبْتُ عَنْ أَلْفٍ وَثَمَانِينَ رَجُلًا I wrote the hadith from, I studied with 1080 teachers. وَلَيْسْ كُلُّهُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ All of them were from Ashabu al-Hadith. وَلَيْسَ فِيهِمْ إِلَّا مَنْ قَالَ الْإِيمَانُ قَوْلٌ وَعَمَلٌ يَزِيدُ وَيَنْقُسْ I never wrote from anybody except that their aqeedah was correct. They said Iman is statement of action, it increases and it decreases. And what is evident that Imam Bukhari was an expert in aqeedah was his book that he wrote towards the end of his life, Khalqu. أفعال العباد خلق أفعال العباد. This book is a testimony of how Imam Bukhari was an expert in the science of عقيدة. And we can go on and on and on how the station of Imam Bukhari رحمة الله عليه is so high. Next week, إن شاء الله تعالى, we'll discuss a little bit about his book about Sahih Bukhari and how high the status of Sahih Bukhari is that he it has earned the title of أصح الكتب بعد كتاب الله. The most authentic of all books to be compiled, the most correct book, the most authoritative book after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the Quran, which is Kalam Allah, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, comes the station and the rank of the compilation of Al Imam al Bukhari, the Sahih, Al Jami' al Sahih of Al Imam al Bukhari, Rahmatullahi alayhi, and then we will, inshallah ta'ala, uh, uh, make explanation of the hadith of Sayyidina Jundub bin Abdullah bin Sufyan al Bajali, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته